He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on this Easter Sunday here at First Presbyterian Church of North Bend. We hope that this morning brings you hope and brings you the joy of Jesus and his resurrection. Glory to you, O God. On this day, you won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O Blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. risen he is, is risen. risen he is risen indeed he is risen he is risen indeed he is risen 
He has risen, has risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. He is risen indeed. On this day, we recognize the wilderness in the world. On this day, we trust that God is near. On this day, we hold on to hope. On this day, we hold on to each other. On this day, we sing Alleluia. On this day, we trust that love is stronger than hate. On this day, we celebrate. On this day, we sing. On this day, we trust that nothing can separate us from God's love. Let, Let us, us worship, worship holy, holy God. God. Have a tradition here where Easter Sunday we have the kids help pull down the dark or the black shroud that goes up on Good Friday. So I'm going to have Sue help me right here so I don't knock things off the table. And if kids are watching at home, if you're watching at home, if not, parents get them up quick. They've got a moment here. They can help. And I'm going to have them join in pulling. All right. How are we doing, Bryn? You got me okay here? All right, kids, you got to pretend. Grab a hold of this. Huh? 
Oh, came down. All right. Well, there we go. Job done. We got it pulled down. So we've come to celebrate Christ is risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Here's a little poem by Jim Lowry to get your Easter started. One thing's sure, what happened on Easter was not your usual truth. It was not natural, it was not logical, it was not medical. What happened on Easter was real, but it was not your usual reality. Friends, this is not our usual reality. Nothing is normal right now. We can see the whole range of the Himalayas without a veil of smog. We can hear birds chirping in cities across the world. And it's Easter Sunday, and there you are, maybe still in your pajamas, participating in worship through a screen. But here we are on Sunday, April 12th, in the year of our Lord 2020, in case you've forgotten what day it is. It is Easter, and we're in need of some good news right now. At first glance, the good news is not going to come to us from Mark's version of the Easter story. It's early, the women are sad and maybe a little bit cranky and still traumatized by what they witnessed on Friday. Nothing is how it's supposed to be. And then this angel person shows up and tells the women something that they already know. Jesus is not there. Those women who left the tomb must have felt anxiety and hope. What would the future hold? If and when they told the disciples what they had seen, what would happen? If they went back to Galilee, would they indeed see Jesus there? Would they see Jesus? Or was it all just a big fairy tale? Here's what I believe. I believe that the future is in God's hands. Or another way of saying that is that I believe God will be there in the future. There's a German theologian, bear with me, there's a German theologian named Jürgen Moltmann who's written some pretty incredible things about hope. But I read something that he wrote this week and it really caught my heart. He wrote, the ultimate reason for our hope is not to be found at all in what we want wish for and wait for. The ultimate reason for our hope is that we are wanted and wished for. 
and waited for. He continues, what is it that awaits us? Does anything await us at all or are we alone? Whenever we base our hope on trust in the divine mystery, we feel deep down in our hearts, there is someone waiting for you, who is hoping for you, who believes in you. We are waited for as the prodigal son in the parable is waited for by his father. We are accepted and received as a mother takes her children into her arms and comforts them. God is our last hope because we are God's first love. Oh, beloveds, I don't know what the end to this chapter of COVID-19 will be. But on my bad days, I imagine what it will be like. I picture Sunday worship, the pews filled and the choir streaming in and all of us trying to sing through tears because we're so happy to be together again. I know at the end of this, we will be waiting for each other. We will be waiting for each other on the stoop of our houses and apartment buildings. We'll be waiting for each other in the beauty of our sanctuary. I even look forward to waiting for you in the flickering fluorescent lights of the basement rooms where we have our committee meetings. At the end of all of this, God says to us, you made it through. You made it through this life. I've been waiting for you and now come have more life. Indeed. Alleluia. Amen. did an amazing job putting together your paper flowers to help us decorate the cross on this Easter. Thank you for doing that. What a beautiful display. I, I hope you can see through the camera just what an incredible job you did. And really, this is an act of worship. This is a way of thanking and praising our risen Lord as we decorate what was his place of death. And we realize now that it's become a thing of, of beauty. So thank you for doing that with us. Some of you wrote messages on your flowers and prayers. And so before we put these up on the cross, we want to read a couple of those messages for you. Christy, go ahead. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways from pole to pole, that wars may cease, absorbed in prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his pierced feet, fair flowers of paradise extend their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him with many crowns, verse 3, Matthew Bridges, 1851. Wow. This comes from the Psalms. It says, praise the Lord, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord. And sweet little hands wrote this one. It says, I pray that my family won't get it. And friends. Mm. 
This comes all the way from Mike and Sandy Corliss. Blessings to our Oak Hills family. The Lord is risen today. Thanks, Mike and Sandy. And from Ashley Lucas, we have happy Easter. Jesus, thank you. Hosanna. Very simple. Jesus is risen. This is another prayer from a young one. I pray that this will all go away and everything will be normal again. Mm. I pray that too. Amen. This says, thank you again, Jesus, for covering us with the blood you shed on the cross in order to wash us whiter than snow. Amen. Mm. Amen. Let's then come together at this time in prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, God, for the gift of this amazing day of resurrection. Our hearts are overflowing with joy and excitement of this Easter day and a new life that is brought in this spring. We pray that you will take our joy, use it to bring hope and light to those who are trapped in darkness and despair. Use the extra gifts that we give today to one great hour of sharing to reach out beyond this place, to empower those with the greatest need, to overcome the world's obstacles, to contribute to your greater good. And use the gift of our very lives to empower our calling, to carry your incarnate love into the world with boldness to those like those who have encountered the living Christ. So, alleluia, everlasting one, we give you our thanks and praise, for Christ is risen, and we are an Easter people, blessed by your miracle of life after death. All our hope and trust is in your grace, O God, for out of darkness comes light, out of despair comes new promise, out of this current crisis, we know we will be together again. Thank you for all the sacrifices made to bring us back to health and life. Those who go before us to give their lives so that we can continue. Thank you for the lessons that we are learning, the ways that we can be more compassionate and caring, the ways that we can learn what it means to slow down, to be with family, to be able to experience the quiet and the presence of you with us always. We do call on you to end this disease. We call on you to bring healing to all who suffer and bring comfort to all who grieve the deaths of loved ones or the many deaths that we hear in statistics each day. Give strength and wisdom to all who battle on our behalf. Fill our lives with gratitude that is beyond understanding. Remove our doubts with a faith that is deep and whole. Heal our spirits with your song of hope. For it is good to celebrate our faith together in this way and a good gift of life beyond death that is a blessing beyond imagination. So thanks to you, our God, our Savior, we celebrate this new life with you, and we join in the prayer of our Savior, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And in this closing hymn, indeed, thine is the glory. Friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Now receive this benediction. May the risen Lord go with you, before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to bring you peace, both this day and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.